When I was learning to fly in Costa Rica, my instructor had 30,000 hours of instructing. Most of them in this airplane you're seeing right now. This landing is after my first solo cross country. I have about 18 hours total time and I carry too much energy and I floated a bit. This landing is in Marble Airstrip in Idaho. The key here is precision. You have to do a good energy management, not carry too much speed because it's short and you come over tall trees as well. So what my instructor always told me is feel the airplane. In the Cessna 182 with 40 degrees of flaps, when you come slow and you start sinking, just adding a little bit of power will help on the rollout and flare for the landing, so it's not as hard. All of this is energy management. To get a feel for the airplane, what you need to do is not only fly often, but practice slow flight often. Stalls, turns at slow flight, and you can get a feel of the airplane when it's sinking, when it's floating, when it carries too much speed. Again, this is Marble Airstrip. I find out that going between the tree and the little hill was easier than coming above the trees so what I did I came with some power and managed the speed and the energy during the turn and then on final I got power and then added just before the touchdown when you reduce the power at slow speed the 182 drops quickly that's why you have to add some power at the end just before touchdown This is a very short gravel bar in the Skykomish River in Washington. I come with power behind the power curve as slow as possible. The slower I want to go, the more power I add. Here we are flying a beach baron in the Bahamas with good energy management. You see when we touch down, it's just after a blip of the stall warning and no floating at all. This landing on a gravel bar in the Stiliguamis River in Washington State. You come slow in between the trees. You have to make a 110 degrees turn at the end for the landing, for a short landing. This landing requires lots of precision. You have to have good energy management. Be careful on the turn at slow speed. What I do is I lower the nose and I add power. I'm also watching the angle of attack indicator, which is a great tool to help for energy management. I think that's a tool that has taught me very well how to manage the energy. The angle of attack indicator is the instrument you see above the glacier with the heads up display.
all my base turns I try to anticipate uh, doing with the nose down and with some power. Closer to touchdown, I'm getting the more power I'm adding. Energy management is about understanding it and knowing your airplane so you, you know what fine tune and adjustments you do to get some precise flying and get the most of, of the energy management. In reality most of the time it's just doing small minor changes and inputs. Of course some tools help and I'm of the opinion that any help is welcome. I have been using the Alpha Systems Angle of Attack Indicator for more than 2000 hours and that one has really helped me understand energy management. Now McFarland came out with a Vernier Throttle. I'm really liking it because you can do fine adjustments for every aspect of flight, especially in the mountains, in canyons, slow speed approaches, so it works really nice. It definitely helps with precision flying. For flying with precision, the small inputs and corrections and the smoothness is what it matters at the end. It takes practice and time, but it's totally worth it. I also fly a military trainer, this is the CJ6 Nanchan. This airplane is all about energy management. It's not overpowered, so you have to manage energy for maneuvers and flying low on doing aerobatics or dogfighting. So you have to have that in mind all the time. It's a good teacher for energy management. Here we are doing a chase, the, the airplanes are both the same and we do not move the power setting, so it's all about energy management. He dives, I follow and then on one moment I just stay up and do a higher turn, keep him inside and all this uh, energy management, so you keep in his six and you follow and you can gain some better position by playing with energy and doing different maneuvers. This is a low level flight over a river. In the CJ6 what I try to do is go high before every turn and make the turn. So in that case I don't have to make a low turn and you have the risk of putting the wing in the water or in the ground. And also you're pulling higher G's. So it is much easier just to play with the energy, go up high, make a turn and then go low again. Managing energy in the form of altitude and airspeed is a fundamental skill required of anyone who flies an airplane. Without it, a pilot is less capable of maneuvering an airplane safely, but more capable of bending one accidentally. An airplane has energy in the form of altitude and power. 
you cannot separate them. And since the beginning of flight training, you start seeing that they are a challenge that you must master. You cannot separate altitude and power, but you can exchange it. That's a key to learn for energy management. The idea is to master energy management, so you are never end up with too low energy and stalling for spinning or doing hard landing or too much energy where you float all over the runway and cannot stop. So the idea is to manage it well and learn to master it. Hope you guys enjoy and thank you for watching. See you next time.